Welcome to this video, designed for those newly elected to a bank's Board of Directors or Board of Trustees. Our goal is to provide you with information to help you fulfill your new role as a board member. In this video, we'll discuss the responsibilities of the board as a whole, as well as the individual responsibilities of directors or trustees as they perform their roles. Particularly, we'll address establishing and maintaining independence, fulfilling the duties of loyalty and care, and acting in the bank's best interest. We'll also highlight actions a new board member may take to be fully informed about his or her position. Finally, we'll discuss director communication with the FDIC. Being elected to serve as a member of a bank's board is an honor. It reflects a person's professional reputation as being successful, civic-minded, and worthy of public trust and confidence. A bank's board oversees the conduct of the bank's business. Effective boards select, supervise, and retain competent management. With the help of management, they establish the bank's short and long-term business objectives and adopt policies. Furthermore, a board will monitor the bank's operations and oversee bank performance by reviewing reports or engaging independent reviews to make sure that the bank is in compliance with established laws and its procedures are consistent with bank policy. All of these actions are part of establishing effective corporate governance. Banks need strong corporate governance in order to operate safely and soundly with high ethical standards and in compliance with all laws and regulations, including those relating to consumer protection. We'll touch on this more in a few minutes. First, we want to talk about a board member's individual responsibilities, which are the foundation of strong governance and help the board as a whole operate most effectively. The first responsibility we'll discuss is establishing and maintaining independence. While effective corporate governance needs a high level of cooperation between the board and management, a director or trustee's duty to oversee the conduct of bank business requires a sufficient understanding of the issues presented to enable them to exercise independent judgment. Critical evaluation of issues that come before the board is essential. Simply stated, board members need to make informed decisions to effectively serve their banks, their shareholders, and their communities. To do this, directors or trustees need to stay apprised of the bank's activities, its condition, and the environment in which it operates. Effective board members review management reports, auditor findings and recommendations, and communications from regulators, including reports of examination. In addition, they actively participate in board and assigned committee meetings. Board members also typically keep up to date with general industry trends, particularly those within the bank's market area. They also stay aware of changes in the regulatory environment. This can be accomplished through presentations from bank management and others, or through more formal director education seminars. Information for board members, including videos and articles on a variety of topics, is also available from the FDIC. It's important for every board member to commit adequate time to be informed about the activities of their bank, especially given the pace of change within the financial industry. Now, let's talk about the second individual responsibility, the duties of loyalty and care. All board members have obligations to discharge their duties to their banks and stakeholders and to comply with federal and state laws, rules, and regulations. This is similar to the responsibilities owed by directors to all business entities. In general, the duty of loyalty requires directors to oversee a bank's affairs with candor, honesty, and integrity. Directors are prohibited from advancing their own personal or business interest, or those of others, at the expense of the bank. The duty of care requires directors to exercise sound business judgment and act in good faith when overseeing a bank's affairs. This means that directors have an obligation to use the same degree of care that a prudent individual would use under similar circumstances. Directors also need to act in a manner that they reasonably believe is in the best interest of the bank, which is the third individual responsibility we'll discuss. To describe this further, let's use an example. Let's say that your bank is interested in offering a new product. Before this new product moves from an idea to a profitable venture, 
An effective board would ask several questions and hold discussions. Some questions a director might ask include, is this new product permissible under state or federal law? If not, then clearly the bank would not be able to move forward with the product offering. If the product is permissible, a director might then ask, is this something that our bank customers or potential customers want? If it is, the next question may be, would this product be profitable for the bank within a reasonable time? The board may determine that profits will not be generated in a time period that would make the new product a worthwhile venture for the bank. In line with profitability, the next question a director could ask is how much risk is involved in this potential product? This is the classic question of whether the risks are worth the reward. If the risks of the new product are such that they can't be measured, monitored, or controlled, then it's not in the best interest of the bank to move forward with the product. Also, is there sufficient management and staff expertise when it comes to this product? If not, how is the bank going to obtain the expertise needed to bring this product to market? All of this is to ultimately answer the question, what is the impact on the bank and its customers? Is it in the best interest of the bank, its customers, and its community to move forward with this product? Asking these types of questions helps a board member fulfill his or her responsibilities. Now that we've talked about a board member's individual responsibilities, let's talk a little more about the responsibilities of the board as a whole. As we've mentioned, the board selects, supervises, and retains qualified senior management. This means that the board is responsible for putting in place a management team that both supports the strategic direction of the bank and can appropriately administer day-to-day -day operations. With that said, board members don't need to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the bank. The board's role is to establish clear policies and guidance regarding acceptable risk exposure levels and ensure that appropriate procedures are developed. Senior management is responsible for implementing the board's policies and developing procedures that translate the board's goals, objectives, and risk limits into operating practices. Effective boards review policies regularly and update them as needed, such as when the board's risk tolerance or the bank's condition changes. Specific policies that are typically approved by the board can cover a variety of areas, including loans, investments, funds management, profit, and capital planning. Key bank policies also address internal controls, the audit program, information technology, and compliance activities. Policies covering human resources, conflicts of interest, and a code of ethics are also important. Keep in mind that the types of policies a bank may have and the level of detail required for each policy will depend on the size, complexity, and risk profile of the bank. The various policies are developed based on the bank's business plan and in light of safe and sound practices. They would include a system of internal controls to ensure the bank operates safely and soundly, with high ethical standards, and in compliance with all laws and regulations, including those relating to consumer protection, to help protect the bank against fraud and abuse. Established policies typically include a way to provide the board with information needed to monitor bank operations and oversee bank performance. This would include recurring management reports to the board. The information presented needs to be meaningful and provide an appropriate level of detail. The board will determine what reports it needs from management depending on each bank's circumstances. When monitoring operations and overseeing bank performance, generally speaking, Effective boards review reports relating to income and expenses, capital levels, loans and investments, problem loans, and concentrations. The board would also review reports for losses and recoveries, funding activities, interest rate risk management, insider transactions, and compliance. Additionally, the board would review any other information that could have a significant impact on the bank such as how a bank helps to meet its community's credit needs. Altogether, these provide comprehensive information regarding bank activities. Importantly, reports need to be provided far enough in advance of board or committee meetings to allow for meaningful review. 
Further, the Board establishes a process for independent review and testing of compliance with policies and procedures and applicable laws and regulations. These reviews typically also cover the accuracy of information provided by management. They can be done by an in-house internal auditor reporting directly to the Board, an outsourced party, or by an examining committee of the Board itself. No matter how the Board chooses to conduct independent testing, the Board would review the independent party's findings with management and monitor management's efforts to resolve any identified problems. We've just shared a lot of information with you about the responsibilities you've assumed by joining a bank's board. You might be wondering how best to get started. We recommend reviewing a few critical pieces of information as a starting point. These include prior reports of examination, external audits, and independent third-party reviews. These items provide a wealth of information about the bank, including its safety and soundness, risk management practices, consumer compliance performance, areas of concern, financial performance, and internal control structure. There is one last item of importance that we want to make sure new board members are aware of, the need to avoid all preferential transactions involving insiders or their related interest. This is addressed in the Federal Reserve Board's Regulation O. Financial transactions with insiders must be above reproach. They must be in full compliance with all laws and regulations concerning such transactions and be judged according to the same objective criteria used in transactions with ordinary customers. The basis for decisions regarding insider transactions must be fully documented. Now, let's talk a little more about how the FDIC and board members can maintain communication. The FDIC welcomes the opportunity to speak with directors at any time but especially during examinations. At the beginning of each FDIC examination, the examiner in charge will invite board members to participate in meetings with examiners and bank management. We welcome discussion on virtually anything pertaining to the examination process, the industry, or the regulatory environment. During examinations in particular, board member attendance at meetings enhances awareness of the examination process and provides board members with an opportunity to discuss their views on bank-related matters with examiners. Please note that director attendance is voluntary, and a lack of participation in examination meetings will not be viewed negatively by examiners. However, clear communication between the FDIC and a bank's board does result in a solid working relationship. In summary, we've covered a number of areas relating to board responsibilities. Directors who regularly attend and actively engage in board and assigned committee meetings and review all meeting materials are highly effective at fulfilling these responsibilities. Remember that as part of the board, you direct and oversee the bank's performance, but you are not expected to be involved in the bank's daily operations. As we conclude, we'd like to remind you that the FDIC has additional videos and resources which can be found on the Banker Resource Center at www.fdic.gov. There are many resources available on the FDIC website, including the Pocket Guide for Directors, the Risk Management Manual of Examination Policies, and the Consumer Compliance Examination Manual. Particularly, the Pocket Guide for Directors outlines expectations for directors. If you need additional information or have questions or comments, please contact your risk management case manager or compliance review examiner, or email the FDIC at supervision at fdic.gov. Thank you for viewing this video. We hope you found it both useful and informative.